Since summer 2019, the hit coming-of-age HBO drama series Euphoria has become extremely popular among teenagers and adults. The series created by Sam Levinson has become a cultural phenomenon off the strength of its cultivating aesthetic, graphic scenes, jaw-dropping storylines, and character fashion moments, even through its flawed writing. The shocking content on Euphoria has garnered both backlash and praise from critics, and every episode has left fans dissecting characters and creating their own theories. It is currently the network's second most watched show since 2004, with an average of 16.3 million viewers per episode in season 2 alone. I've been watching Euphoria faithfully since its premiere in 2019, and videos like these are kinda outside of my lane of content. But I thought I'd talk about some of the black pop cultural references I caught in the show. A video on Euphoria was also requested by a subscriber whose name I think it's pronounced Ronnie. So thanks Ronnie. This video is sponsored by Scentbird. Hey guys, it's me, Crystal Alejandro, the writer, producer, narrator, the mother of BFTV, basically. I know you guys don't see my face on this channel often, and I promise it's not intentional. Something else you guys rarely see on my channel is sponsorships. Scentbird is a monthly fragrance subscription that allows you to try new perfumes or colognes every month without buying the full-size bottle. Lately, I've been so obsessed with Jackie Ina's TikTok videos and her insane perfume collection, and I've been wanting to try some of her perfume recommendations. But I prefer to try samples before buying full expensive bottles of perfume that just ends up collecting dust on my dresser. Scentbird gives me the opportunity to try perfumes by over 600 indie brands and fashion designers like Prada, Gucci, Valentino, and my personal favorites, Juicy Couture and Versace. This month, I got to try scents by Pamela Rowland, which I've never heard of, Crystal Noir by Versace, and Blush by Kenneth Cole, which is currently my favorite so far. As you can see, I've sprayed it quite a few times. Each month, you'll get a 30-day supply of scents that comes in small, stylish, leak-proof, recyclable cases that allow you to twist it up and remove the bottle. Scentbird bottles are way bigger than the samples you typically get and can probably last you for way longer than a month. They come with a spray automizer so that you can take it anywhere with you and not worry about it opening up and leaking out in your good purse like what happened to me recently. All you have to do is head over to the link in the description box and take a short quiz to let them know your vibe and the kind of scents you're into. Then you get to choose the fragrances you'd like to try that month. Use my code BFTV to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, making your purchase just $7. Everything will be linked in the description box. Thank you again to today's sponsor, Scentbird. Now let's get into the video. Euphoria is an American teen drama series created, executive produced, and written by Sam Levinson for HBO. A lot of people aren't aware that the series is actually based on a 2012 Israeli teen drama of the same name and similar synopsis created by Ron Lesham and Daphna Levin. The American HBO version centers a 17-year-old named Rue, played by Zendaya, who grapples with addiction, grief, and family issues. It also follows a group of suburban high school friends as they each struggle with their own shortcomings and typical adolescent issues like addiction, dating apps, self-harm, heartbreaks, gender dysphoria, friendships, hookups, and absentee parents. The show first premiered in June 2019, starring some of Hollywood's best young up-and-coming actors. Season 1 mainly focuses on deep dives into the characters' backstories through the eyes of the teenagers. But the beautiful cinematography and eye-catching makeup artistry couldn't distract me from the cliches and subtle stereotypes. Like most coming-of-age shows and movies from the mid-2000s to now, 
Euphoria uses a lot of black or hip hop music for party scenes or when the writers want characters to be perceived as edgy and rebellious by the audience, which kind of gives the culture a negative connotation. The episodes are packed with popular tunes by Tupac, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Drake, Jay Z, Mary J. Blige, Lauren Hill, Slick Rick, and the Ghetto Boys. In season one, most of the episodes are named after classic and popular hip hop songs. Episode two titled, Stunting Like My Daddy, gives an inside look at the character Nate Jacobs and his conflicted relationship with his father, Cal. Although Nate struggles with daddy issues, he still tries to fulfill the dreams of his father, who's also battling his own demons. The episode's title references the 2006 Lil Wayne and Birdman song. Episode 3, titled Made You Look, is a reference to the 2002 hit song by Nas, where he famously asserts his dominance over his rival at the time, Jay-Z. I made you look, you a slave to a page in my rhyme book, getting big money, playboy, your time's up, with them gangsters. The episode follows Kat Hernandez's storyline as she rides her wave of newfound internet fame from being a webcam girl. Their strongest and highest rated episode of the season titled Shook Ones Part 2 is named after the classic 1995 song by hip hop duo Mob Deep. Look, they shook, cause ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Scared to death, but scared to look, they shook, cause ain't no such thing. On the record, the duo takes aim at their rivals and calls out wannabe gangsters and cowards. The episode is definitely appropriately titled if you remember all of the events that took place at the carnival. However, the song is not played in the episode. Episode 5 titled O3 Bonnie and Clyde focuses on Maddie and Nate's toxic and violent relationship as she tries to protect him from facing charges for the incident that took place in the previous episode. The title references the 2002 hit song by Jay-Z featuring Beyonce. This song also doesn't appear in the episode. The O3 Bonnie and Clyde, Hov and B, Holly. Episode 6 is called The Next Episode. Despite sounding like a generic title, it was actually based on the Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg song. Snoop Dogg! Snoop in this episode, Zendaya's character Rue makes a reference to Euphoria's HBO predecessor, The Wire. Rue threatens a middle school kid by name dropping characters from The Wire, who all happen to be criminals and gang members. You know what happens when you spend an extended amount of time in rehab? You tend to make friends with those hardcore. So let me be very clear with you. If you so much as go past first base with my little sister or try to get her high again, I will call Omar, I will call Marlo, I will call Avon, I will call Brother Mozone, I will call Bodie, and I will call Stringer, and I will have these standing outside of your front lawn. Do you hear me? Or even Weebe. 100%. In addition to the musical references mentioned earlier, the characters are also big fans of black music based off of the posters hanging in their rooms, like Maddie Perez having Aaliyah's self-titled album, Mariah Carey's Heartbreaker cover, and SZA's Control album posters hanging on her wall. Rue has Rihanna's Rated R album and Young M.A.'s posters hanging in her room. And Cassie and her sister Lexi have a Victoria Monet poster on their door, as well as a poster of Kalani on the wall. Now let's move on to casting and characters. A large part of Euphoria's popularity comes from the trendy provocative school attire and makeup artistry. The show's creative team focused on crafting individual character looks and archetypes. 
The show's principal makeup artist, Daniela Davey, revealed to Vogue magazine that she drew inspiration from Nina Simone's rhinestone eye look from the 1960s when it came to Maddie's makeup. Me, personally, when the show first premiered and I saw the use of rhinestones around the eyes, I immediately thought about Sierra in her 2004 O music video. The show's costume designer Heidi Bivens says she and actress Alexa Demi often collaborated on Maddie's costumes. Maddie Perez's character is given the spicy Latina trope, which has drawn some criticism, but people have also pointed out the use of black girl aesthetic for some of Maddie's looks, like bamboo earrings, long thick acrylic nails, monogrammed logo attire, and laid edges, all aesthetics and trends created by young black women from impoverished neighborhoods or black women lacking money and access. Some may argue that some of these trends are popular among Latin women in certain cities and neighborhoods, but no matter how you spin the wheel, it always comes back to black women as the trendsetters. Does Maddie's character completely appropriate black culture? Not 100%, I personally wouldn't exactly say that, but I do think it's always important to remind people of the origins of these style trends. Questions that need answers. Did anybody else notice Cassie using Shea Moisture? And what is the point of the vape girl who turns her black scent on and off when she feels like it? Like perf. Yeah, this is spooky. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Where the f did your accent go? It went out the window. Where the f did that go? Oh, you buck away. wild, honey, and everything. Now you be like, yo, the mummy man. And what about Fez and Ashtray's characters that act a little hood, but it doesn't appear from the writing as though they have any black friends? Euphoria has also been criticized for the lack of black or dark skin representation. The issue isn't really the fact that there aren't many black people on the show. In fact, there are a lot of shows we love that only center white storylines or aren't very culturally diverse. The criticism is more so about the heavy co-option of black American culture in the writing and direction without adequate black representation, while also sidelining the few black or dark skinned characters. I did notice a few black girls on the cheerleading team, which means East Highland High School, or Euphoria High according to social media, is a little more diverse than we think. However, these black girls are rarely seen around the school unless they're being used as props in the background of Maddie's sassy cheer and dance scenes. The black girl prop tactic we've seen people like Miley Cyrus use for her We Can't Stop music video, and by Taylor Swift in her Shake It Off music video, where the ballerina scene is full of white girls, while the twerking scene is made up of mostly black girls. But that topic can be a whole separate video. Everything mentioned in this video are clear indicators that there aren't any black writers on Euphoria's team. But it turns out that the writers did a great job with the writing because, and I hate to break it to you guys, this is an accurate depiction of white and non-black suburban kids in the year 2022. Hip hop is currently the number one music genre in the country and is also a culture. Hip hop has had a social impact on the United States since the 1980s. And at this very moment, we are really seeing the influence across the world. When you Google images of rap festivals like Rolling Loud or Astro World, the main demographic of attendees are white or non-black kids. Not only are they now the leading consumers of hip hop music, they're also currently the leading consumers of streetwear clothing and brands. While this is contributing to the erasure of black culture, this is just the reality of modern times. Like I said earlier, I really do enjoy Euphoria, but I do think it's important to have these conversations. And I just wanted to point out some of the black pop cultural references I caught in these first two seasons. I would also like to show a little love and appreciation to the beautiful Veronica Taylor who plays the character Bobby. Bobby, you okay? Oklahoma yourself off and get back on that pony. Giddy up. 
Thanks again to the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Make sure you guys head down to the description box for the link to Scentbird's website or app. And don't forget to use my code BFTV to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, like this video, and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.